Over the years, I've done several knockoffs of popular blockbusters on this show, from Jaws to Star Wars, King Kong, and even Tron. But one movie I haven't done a knockoff of yet is Alien. Not really sure why. It's not like there aren't plenty of movies to choose from. Well, there's a new Alien movie coming out later this year, so might as well get started. After all, there's also King Kong and Star Wars movies coming out. <sighs> I am going to be doing a lot of knockoffs this year, aren't I? Dark Side of the Moon is a 1990 direct-to-video sci-fi movie that, as of this video, has never gotten a release on DVD or Blu-ray. I would say that's a bad sign, but considering Apes getting a Blu-ray release next month, I don't really know if that means anything when it comes to quality. Fun fact, if you play the Wizard of Oz soundtrack while watching this movie, it totally syncs up. And what is this? Everyone knows there's no fire in space. Plus, I'm pretty sure there aren't movie credits up there either. By the way, I apologize in advance for the VHS hum that's on my copy of the movie. If it helps, just pretend you're watching one of my early videos. So the movie takes place in the far future year of... Eh, that's still technically the future at this point, so I won't do the echo. Anyway, the text tells us that a repair ship called Space Corps 1 has been sent to repair a nuclear-armed satellite, a job that's not just dangerous, but very dangerous. Yeah, suck it, deadliest catch. Do those crabs have nukes on them? Didn't think so. By the way, does anyone else miss the days when even low-budget direct-to-video movies had decent effects shots? I sure do. We're introduced to the crew of Space Corps 1, and way to smoke in a place where you can't open a window, asshole. Oh well, it's nice to know mullets make a comeback in the 2020s. The ship has some trouble trying to contact Houston, probably because they're actually in the Overlook Hotel. What's up, Jets? Hi, Lloyd. A little slow tonight, isn't it? <laughs> anyway, they ask him to talk to the ship's computer, Leslie, to find out what's wrong. Leslie? Why the hell would they call their computer that? Leslie, what do you mean functional? Everything is working accordingly. Wait, that's Leslie? Their computer is a sexy leather-clad woman? <laughs> okay, well, good to know where NASA's priorities are, I guess. Now well, looks like the Tyrell Corporation made their replicants a little more submissive after 2019. A fire breaks out, which takes the power offline, but the crew doesn't seem too concerned. Hell, just light up another one while you're at it. Well, at least we have auxiliary lighting. Yeah, plus the ship looks way moodier this way. They learn they only have 24 hours to get the power back online before they run out of oxygen, and it turns out there's even more bad news. We can't lock into this, sir. Why? Because we're drifting towards Centris B-40. Dark side of the moon. Title drop. In other news, sexual harassment. Damn it, Jennings. Can't you concentrate on this? We're in deep shit here. Cookie, with you around, it gets harder and harder all the time. I'm talking about my penis. <laughs> yuck, yuck. Like, you know something else? It might be your last chance to get into my flight suit. Look, don't get into his flight suit. There's nothing but pork rind crumbs and protein stains in that thing anyway. At least they found a new way to make instant coffee in the future. And why have there just been slow, moody scenes of the crew interacting so far? What does this movie think it is, alien? Oh well, let's learn more about the crew. You knew it had to be hot. It has cream in it. He's allergic to it, Alex. Fibrillation of the heart leading to a major cardiac arrest. And I wouldn't keep bringing it up if it wasn't important to the plot later. But they've got bigger things to worry about. Something's out there. It's coming right at us. That's the moon, dummy. Okay, actually it's an abandoned space shuttle, and the crew decides to dock with it so they can take a look around. Here's hoping they find Steve Railsback and Matilda May in there. Good thing they came prepared. Two RTCs, rapid fire chambers, extended barrel, full chokes, heat sensor sights, tracers included. Dude, we're on a spaceship. We get one hole in the wall and we're all dead. Why the hell would we have these? Hey, it can't hurt. Yes, it can! That's the point! I wish I had me one of these babies when I was in Nicaragua. He didn't actually fight in Nicaragua, he just wishes he had these when he was on vacation. Anyway, time to take a look inside that shuttle. See anything? Oh, it's too dark. I know, this VHS print isn't very good. This place is so dark they don't even notice this alien sperm. Ooh. Well, it looks like they managed to get the shuttle's light bright back online. Plus, they even take the shuttle's oxygen. Uh, what exactly was that a POV shot of? Did they all just get space aids or something? 
The crew of the shuttle seems to be dead, but it looks like they're not alone in there, and it appears that this alien has blood for blood. Just kidding. Although if this were a TV movie, that would be a great place to put a commercial break. Well, the guy's dead, but better shoot him just to be sure. Oh wait, never mind. Looks like his chest comes pre-burst. And you see that? That's another decent effect shot done on a low budget. Somebody needs to tell the Asylum their movies don't have to look like CGI exploitation vomit. The power comes back on, but something's still not quite right. What is it? I'm going to access Leslie. Now, when you say access Leslie... Let's just say I need to talk to her. Okay, okay, no need to get defensive. I'm not here to judge. I mean, what happens in space stays in space after all. Hello, Paxton. Hey, Dominatrix Siri. Now, if you don't mind, I'd like to ask you a few questions. Unfortunately, it looks like this guy's the only one allowed to access Leslie. Lieutenant Giles does not have security clearance to access my files. Uh, well, it's a security override that I added to the system. Paxton, nobody authorized you to do that. Get rid of it. Remember, bro, I may be party in the back, but up front I'm all business, okay? They discover that the dead crew member they found on the shuttle isn't listed in their database, which means someone must have made a paperwork error. Spooky. They also learn the shuttle's escape pod landed in a very unusual place. 126 miles from the Florida coast, between Bermuda and Miami. Bermuda Triangle. Mm, I've seen that movie. It's terrifyingly bad. The docs also got some news about the guy they found on the shuttle. Well, there's no foreign virus. Sea count appears normal. There's no plasma obstruction. He checks out normal. Yeah, except for a huge hole in the middle of his stomach. Yeah, I'm guessing that's probably what killed him, but thanks for letting me know that other than that, he's fine. The real big news, though, is that not only is there a Bermuda Triangle on Earth, there's also one on the moon, and Space Corps 1 is right between them. Worse yet, they appear to have a case of space zombies. <sighs> Zombies who also appear to be giving birth to the Green Goblin? And surprise, turns out the first crew member to die is no Ripley. You're as loud as you want. No one can hear you. Well, yeah, I mean, this movie's tagline was, In space, no one can hear you yell. Not only does this guy have the curse of the cat people, but he also forces her to give him a monster raspberry. Well, at least he appears to clean up the mess he made. No, I just wait a minute. Nobody is going in there. Yeah, man, it is way too dangerous. No one can go in there. Let me go in there first. Unless you have hair like Billy Ray Cyrus. All right, motherfucker. Just give me one excuse, and I'll explosively decompress this ship and kill us all. Turns out she's still alive, but the others don't seem to believe Giles' story. I saw him pull her face inside his stomach. Which, now that I say that out loud, it sounds kind of silly. Oh well, back to the exposition bot for more info, I guess. Is there any logical explanation for Discovery's disappearance into the Bermuda Triangle? I don't know, your ship's computer is a sexy fembot that can't leave her chair. Where's the logic in that? Forget about logic. About speculation. They did it because Camilla Moore is hot? In any case, the ship's still on collision course with the moon, so they decide to use the space shuttle's relays, so something, something, it'll fix it. Anyway, I have to see what I can salvage from this other ship. If it's our relays that are non-functional, maybe we can use theirs. Wait a minute, you're not going back on that ship. Will you cut it out with this sci-fi bullshit? Why? That's like half this movie's dialogue. Back on the shuttle, they try to get King's Quest IV to boot up, and we find out the shuttle has a pool. And did the NRA sponsor this mission? They're supposed to be repairing a satellite, not doing a tour of duty in Afghanistan. Why the hell do they have so many guns? Plus, I don't think the crew's been trained to use them properly. What happened? I was feeling I... Just firing away. Again, you're on a spaceship, so fire away! What's the worst that could happen? Whatever's doing all the killing sure seems to like hanging and then dropping people from things. They better figure out what the hell is going on. The cinematography's getting moodier by the second. I knew you'd come. Come closer. I've always wanted you. And apparently the movie just turned into a porno spoof of itself. Well, I meant what I said earlier about what happens in space stays in space, so go for it, dude. Besides, I hear she's a real demon in the sack. You have weakened. And now you belong to me. Great. 
great. Not only is she possessed, she's also clingy. And who the hell keeps turning the lights out during these parts? At this point, I think the crew's starting to get a little paranoid. Where the hell were you? I've always been here, Mr. Torrance. Oh, wait. That was a different character in The Shining that said that. Eh, whatever. You get what I meant. Well, we already vacuum-sealed Camilla Moore into that outfit. Might as well see if she can figure out what's going on. There must be over 500 vessels listed as lost. 665, to be exact. Lucky us. It would be 666th. Wait a second, 666th? And holy crap, if you look at the coordinates of the Bermuda Triangle and take out all the numbers that aren't 6, the only ones left are the number 6! Six. 666. Six, six. The Mark of the Beast. So yeah, turns out the Bermuda Triangle is actually some sort of gateway to hell, and the thing that's been killing the crew this whole time is actually the devil. I went into this movie thinking it was going to be a knockoff of Alien, and now I'm wondering if this movie didn't get ripped off by Event Horizon. Well, it looks like you got the devil on your spaceship. Better tell the rest of the crew. Where have you been? I was with Leslie. Just talking! Giles goes to get the relays from the shuttle, and he tells the crew that if he's not back within 30 minutes to blow up the shuttle using the satellite's nuclear warheads. But wait a second, you can't blow up the shuttle yet! You still need to rescue Jonesy the Cat! I will say this, space shuttles are a lot roomier on the inside than I thought they'd be. Seriously, it looks like they managed to squeeze an entire abandoned factory in there. Getting the relay isn't going to be easy. Not only does he have to get his socks wet, but he also has to fight the devil's penis. <laughs> Huh. Okay, that was easy. And sure, go ahead and get the relay wet. I'm sure it'll still work fine. You might want to hurry, though. We agreed on 30 minutes. Time is up. Oh man, this place is so big. Why didn't I give myself more time? The giant water! No! So walking engaged on all humans. No, 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 that's not how the alarm should sound. Here, let me fix it for you. Doc goes to help Giles by opening the airlock, and great job, now the entire ship doesn't have any oxygen and you're all dead. And holy crap, turns out this guy's not a ghost, he's the devil. Who the hell are you? Fate is in the hands of God, but I control your destiny. Of course, the devil tried to prevent Giles from getting blown up earlier so that he could... fool the guy he was just going to reveal himself to five seconds later? I guess? You don't have the guts to use that thing. Oh, that's why? He was waiting for them to be alone so he could ask for a blowjob. I don't think this guy's into it, though. Jesus. What have I done? You just shot the devil in the face. It's probably the most badass thing you'll ever do in your life. And I guess these two are fine despite being exposed to the vacuum of space for several minutes. What took you so long? Something was trying to keep me from getting back on the ship. Say, do you think it could have something to do with that whole devil thing going on? It was in Paxton. Now it's in Jennings. If these two really want to confirm if the devil's nearby, they just need to see if a piece of toast lands jelly side down. And they better hurry, it looks like it's after Leslie. Get away from me, you motherfucker. Camilla Moore, playing a sexy computer, just called the devil a motherfucker. This movie's starting to grow on me. Alright, time to hunt us a devil. But first... Save the prayers, huh? What's your problem? Prayers don't mean jack shit. Uh, you just found out the devil is real. I'm assuming that means God is real, too. Probably couldn't hurt. Speaking of God, where the hell is he during all this? The devil said he's trying to gather enough souls to become powerful enough to overthrow you, so cut the mysterious ways bullshit and stop this asshole already. The two of them split up to find Jennings, cause that's always a great idea in these types of movies. Oh well, I guess it works. Power mullet, don't fail me now! <laughs> Got him right in the Jan Michael Vincent. Just do it, man. Just fucking do it. Uh, come on, Giles. We still have 15 minutes left. Oh, oh shit. 
Tell my truck nuts I love them. Well, congratulations. You just shot the devil. Apparently. So, does that mean everything's okay? <laughs> Leslie, it's Giles. Give me a status update. The ship has come to a complete standstill. Are you sure? Because according to the effect shots, you're still moving. Not only that, but it appears Leslie doesn't have a head. Oh well, that doesn't mean these two can't take some time out for a little coffee break. But wait a second, that cream he's using is fat-free. That must mean he's the devil. Or the Terminator, according to the music. And wasn't there a relay they needed to replace? You don't believe in God, do you, Giles? And that's strange. You believe in me? I should have known. Yeah, you should have. That reveal was incredibly obvious. You don't think I believe in that shit, do you? The moment you questioned your faith, your soul was mine. Your soul is mine. I can believe the devil's getting stronger. He's almost perfected his devil bitch slap. Thankfully, Giles knows the devil's one weakness. Nuclear warheads. But if it's God's will, then so be it. If not, then I'll see you in hell. Yeah, you probably will. What the fuck? And so, with the devil destroyed, the moon proudly shows off its toy collection. The end. I'll be honest, I went into this with pretty low expectations, but I was actually kind of surprised. Much like 2019 after the fall of New York, this is a movie that's clearly influenced by another movie, yet still manages to be pretty original. The cinematography's moody, the effects are decent, and the idea of having the devil in space was actually pretty inventive for the time. Don't get me wrong, the movie definitely has its flaws, like too much exposition dialogue and the characters making bad decisions for no other reason than the script requires them to. But overall, this was better than I thought it was going to be, which is why it's kind of surprising it's never gotten a DVD release. Seriously, Queen Kong is on DVD and this isn't? Oh well, I guess DVD distributors work in mysterious ways. Well, that's all for now. Until next time. Get away from me, you motherfucker.